What if you could host your Next.js project without being scared of success? It's common on X or Reddit that I see people complaining about receiving crazy expensive bills from their Next.js project hosted on Versal. And this is due to the way their pricing is done. $20 a month per user with nice limits such as 100 GB of bandwidth and 10 million edge requests per month. The risk is when you go above those requests, the cost can quickly skyrocket, even more if your code and the assets you serve are not optimized. But Next.js is free and open source, and you can self-host your projects on a server starting at $15 per month, not per user. To do that, you can follow their deployment guides in Next.js documentation. In this video, I will show you how to create CI/CD pipelines and host multiple Next.js projects on the same server with our platform, Elestio. Let's start by creating a Next.js project. So we go to the documentation, there is automatic installation. Let's copy this command. In a terminal, we can paste it, hit enter. We need to install the package, okay. What is your project named? Let's start with a server-side rendering project. So let's name it Next SSR. Do we want to use TypeScript it won't have any impact. Let's say no. Yes, lint, okay. SRC directory, okay. And use the app router. Turbo pack, no. And replace the alias, no. Okay, so now it's installing everything. Okay, so our project is created. Let's open the folder where it's located. Open folder. Open it. Okay, so let's try to run it with yarn dev or npm run dev. And now it's running on localhost 3000. Okay, this is the default page when we start an app. Next.js gets started by editing this file. And we have the nice deploy now button redirecting us to Versal. Very well done. But that's not what we are going to do. First, let's edit it a bit to show that we have the power of something. So what we could do is remove the list and say hello world, this is my Next.js project. Okay, so it's updating correctly. And just to be sure that the API is working too, we'll create an API root. Again, to learn how to do it, we go back to the documentation. We have a root handlers. In the app folder, we need to create an API folder and to have a file that we can name root.js. Okay, let's try it. So in the left, inside app, we create an API folder and inside root.js. We copy paste their example, but we want the JavaScript version. We paste it. Then inside our root, we will need to return a next response. And we'll just return hello world and a status code of 200. Let's try it, slash API. And we have message, hello world. Perfect, we have our Next.js project to try. To be able to deploy it, first we need to host it in GitHub or GitLab. I will create a new GitHub repository. I will name it Next SSR. I will keep it private, empty, and create repository. Okay, so I know they already init the Git. So what I will need to do is do the commit and assign it to our GitHub repository. So I copy this, I will git add everything with git add dot and paste the rest. Sounds good. We can reload our GitHub repository and the code is available on my GitHub repository. Now let's deploy it using LSTO. So click on login, head to CICD. You have the choice between a GitHub repository, GitLab or pre-made Docker Compose. We will use the GitHub repository that we used. So git account, it's mine. And the scope, it will be LSTO examples. Very useful if you are part of multiple organizations. So then the project is next SSR, import. And then you have the choice to deploy it on a new VM. If you don't have one yet, you will have to choose it or on existing VM. So it will create another pipeline without any additional cost. But because it's the first one we deploy, we need to choose a service provider. You have the choice between all of those. Or if you have already an existing server, you can check the last option and follow the instructions to host it on your existing server. 
For this video, I will be using Hetzner. Then choose your region and the specs of your server. I will keep the simplest one at $15 per month. Then next. Now we need to configure the build of our project. So just before you need to decide the project name, it's the GitHub repository, so it's fine. And the branch you want to deploy. For example, you have a development branch and the main one for production, you can do it. Then you have to decide between static website and full stack. For Next.js, you can go with both, depending on what you are trying to achieve. I will also show you both, but currently we made an API route that we want to be able to test. So we'll use SSR, server-side rendering. If we go to package.json, you can see how it works. Next dev, when we run yarn dev or npm run dev, next dev, it will start the development server. If you are using SSG, static site generation, for a static website or a single page application, you would run npm run build and you won't need a runtime server. But because in this case we want the API, but it could be other reason you choose SSR, what we will need to do is to use next start. This is the production command to run your Next.js project. We keep full stack. The runtime for a Next.js project is a Node.js. You can choose the Node version you want. Let's keep the 20. And then you can expand the build and output setting. But instead of filling it manually, you can choose the framework of the project you deploy. In our case, Next.js. That should be good. Then if you need, you can add your environment variables directly here. You can type them or upload your M file. And lastly, on what port your project is running. So you go to exposed ports. And in this case, it is port 3000, which is the default one for Next.js. So we don't need to touch it. Once you are fine with it, click on create CI CD pipeline. It will first create your VM the first time, so it will be a bit longer, and then it will run the build pipeline. You can check the progression of the build by clicking here, history, and view the building logs. And here you can see in real time what is happening. Useful if you have complex build process and you need to diagnose some errors. Once finished, you can see the deployment date and the duration. Let's go to details to access our instance then it will automatically deploy it with a CNAME. So let's follow the URL. And we have our Next.js project up and running. Does the API run? Let's add the slash API. And perfect, we have hello world. We are hosting our Next.js project with server-side rendering for $15 per month. If we update anything in our code, let's say we want to change the deploy address to lst.io let's git add git commit change deploy address and git push of course do pull request and so on automatically in our dashboard we see it's entering a building step we can go to history see which commit triggered the new build once done we have the success let's go back to our instance and let's check that it works in the bottom left, you have LSTO, so it's perfect. Okay, so now let's try to deploy again our project, not with server-side rendering, but static site generation. I don't think we need to create another project. So let's go to CI-CD, create a new CI-CD pipeline, like we did earlier. My account, LSTO examples, next SSR. But this time, instead of deploying to a new VM, we will use the same server. If you have multiples one, you would see the list of them. I will keep the one in the default project, which is the one we just created. And then next, you can see the price is not increasing. This time we won't use full stack because we just want to host the build that we will build through the CI CD pipeline. So static website, we can still choose the version of Node.js for the build itself. Then the framework, it will be Next.js. Build and output settings should be correct. I will trust LSTO. And the difference is we don't have a run command because it's only hosting the build files. We don't have any backend code running. We can still adjust different settings. For the ports, you can adjust the different settings and then create a CI CD pipeline. But we have an error because 
the same project exists. I didn't change the name. So for this project, it's named SSG for static site generation. Let's create it. This time it will be a bit faster because it doesn't need to deploy the VM, only building our project. So on our CI-CD instance, we have two pipelines, the SSR1 and SSG. Let's open SSG. You can see where it will be deployed, like we did earlier in history. See the build process with the server logs during the build. Once deployed, we go to details and open our new project. And it doesn't work because I forgot something important. In the config of our Next.js project, I need to add output export for static generation. Then we can try the build. But I'm getting an error because we have the API and it can't work with this current type of build. So we can get rid of it, retry to build, and now it successfully generates out folder. So let's commit this update ssg and push it's building the project again once it's done we can try it again and our project is up and running if one of your project require more resources than the server you chose at the beginning you can just click on move pipeline and you will be able to migrate one of your ci cd pipeline either to another server more powerful you have or on a new one this is how you can scale it vertically Thank you for watching, we hope you enjoy discovering how to deploy your Next.js project with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next tutorials and platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video, available here.